miracles to destroy Nigeria and Africa. They, they preach it. I saw miracles. I've seen miracles. But the preaching of miracles is, an, is, is satanic. It's satanic not because miracles are naughty, but they've used those miracles to, to corrupt people's brain. Fake miracles everywhere. But are miracles real? Yes, miracles are real. Are miracles real? I've seen miracles now. I will not pray for you. See miracles? Miracles are real. But hear me very well. Most of these miracles that are promoted in Nigeria are fake miracles. Pastors use it to get money for members. Take it from me. Hello. I'm a teaching food. They use miracles to. They are real. And they got it from American preachers. If you read God's general, there is this preacher in America. He's a very sincere man of God, though, in the 18th or 19th century. Very sincere man of God. If he, in his crusade, he will bring cripples. Then he will bring those who are not crippled and bring, put them in wheelchair in front of those who are crippled. Now I'm telling you, it's the God's general. And his intention is that when he's praying, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, those who are not crippled will stand up. Then those who are behind, that team may help their faith to rise. This is where Nigeria pastors copy it from. <laughs> Hello, oh, you don't know what I'm telling you. They, they call it faith booster. Yeah. That's, a, that's a crusade, that's a crusade which gives note. I was the secretary of that crusade in Ghana. One of the most powerful crusades ever organized in Abuja. I was, I'm going to remember the crusade. I was the secretary, I was young there, I was the secretary of that crusade, and I won't mention his name, very great evangelist. No crusade has ever beaten that record in Ghana. I was, I was sitting in the podium, look at the chairman, myself, then look at the, the evangelist. May God help pastors. You know, they said that these things they are doing is not because it's bad, though. they are only trying to help the faith of their members. So that their faith, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word, word of God. But those witches they put was deliberately, but the man repented, he has repented now. Yes, yeah, actually, yeah, he, has, he has repented from those things, but he has already opened up for others who are still doing it now. The man has genuinely repented from it. I know him. It's not to win again. But he has already opened up to many pastors who are doing the same thing. Praise God. Don't you think that Nigeria churches, I was praying this morning for two hours, it got to a point, I said, God, may you heal African, African churches are sick. Are we, are we sick? Yes, we are sick. And nothing can heal us like God's word. Oh, that amen is too cold. Oh, that amen is too cold. I told you as a young minister, it's not because my faith is strong, I would have been a bad pastor. Oh boy, there was that opportunity to be a bad pastor, but thank God for my stubbornness in Christ. One of them told me, not to tell me that, he told me that how old was I? I was about, is it 21 years or 22 years? Okay, no, I was, I was young then, I was, not even, I, was, I was not even a pastor. I was working with him, and we passed through a wild garment church. And he said, he said, he, 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 come in, Fide. he said, Fide, there is one perfume. If I get a perfume from this Wagaman church and I spray it around my church, demons will go. Okay, imagine a young boy hearing this kind of thing. If not, God will help me. And this is the person that I'm looking up to. <laughs> that if you spray the perfume, demons will go. So we shall pray for African churches today. Or oh, diamond is too cold. Okay, let's land up here now. Oh, praise God. Chapter 15, let's land up here now. Oh, glory to God. Let's read the last one. Let's go to verse 34 as we round up. Verse 34 as we round up. Glory to God. Are you blessed today? What's the first lesson? Lesson number one. God wants us to what? What's number two? He wants us to prepare for the... What's number three? He used a practice of baptizing on behalf of the dead to preach what? But he did not affirm number four he used his life facing dead to further explain to them about what? The last two points. 
verse 55. Are you verse 55? Okay, verse 54. So when this 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 corruptible shall put on the incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall even brought to pass the saying that is written, Dead is swallowed up in victory. Oh, dead, where is that sting? Oh, grave, where is that victory? The sting, mark that word, the sting of death is what? Sin. And the strength of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God, which gives us all the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Finally, the last one, verse 58, everybody, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast on in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Come and say, my labor is not in vain. I read it from this translation. It says, uh, so my dear brother, since future victory is sure, be strong and steady, always abounding in the Lord's work. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever wasted, as it would be if there were no resurrection. Now look up now as I run up here. Paul ran up the chapter 15 by saying, when Christ returns, this flesh will go. Even though you are in the grave, you come out. Then you put on incorruptible. He said, if that happens, then the statement, oh, dead. I mean, dead has been swallowed up in victory. That speaks about life after this place. That, that, that's what we're talking about. Then the next thing he said, the stink, the stink of death is what? Is sin. And the stink of sin is the law. So the strength of sin is the law. But he said, in one victory, all are gone. Both the death, both the sin, but the law, all are gone in one stroke of victory. So the strength of death is what? Sin. And the strength of sin is what? The law. Somebody explain the law. So powerful. I read this book. Powerful man from the South Korea. Wow. I like his explanation on the law and grace. He said, and I quote him word for word. He says, the law is like diagnosis in hospital. When you are diagnosed, diagnosed, it's not that you are healed. Diagnosis is not healing. So the law is like diagnosis, while the, the gospel is the prescription. Oh, very powerful. What the Lord does, it tells you you have this sin, but it does not solve it. So prescription is the New Testament, is the gospel, is Christ. So the law is like a diagnosis, while the prescription is the gospel of Christ. So the law does not heal you, it, it tells you you have cancer. But it cannot heal you. Diagnosis is not healing. Am I right? Uh, uh, when you are being diagnosed, it tells you what you have, but you need a prescription from the doctor to cure it. So the law is like diagnosis, and the prescription is like the gospel of Christ. Praise the Lord. Then finally, as I round up here, Paul said, whatever you do, have you known that there is life after death? Let us be committed in the work of the Lord. Nothing you do for God is a waste. Hear me very well. Because but if there is no restoration, your work in God's house is a waste. Oh, you think that me now? Come on, say, if there is no restoration, then you should be like a seeker in the house of God. If, if I know, if I die tomorrow, I won't resurrect, then I will not come to church, I will not come to church again. But because I know there is life after death, and there is resurrection, then you should be extremely committed in the house of God because there is resurrection. So resurrection should make you more favored in God's work. Life after death should steer in you the ability to be more committed in the house of God because you know that, imagine if after I preach now and I die tomorrow, what will I go to? What will I present before God? So because of life after death, I will be more committed and more cautious. So if you are lackadaisical in the church, it's because you are not conscious that there is life after death. Let's be on our feet. Glory to God. Somebody shout a big amen. Is it a good meal? Come on, say, because of resurrection, because of life after death, my commitment from today will multiply, will increase, because I know that there is life after death, there is restoration. So there is need to be committed. 
Why will you be committed after today? So do you see why you have no reason why you shouldn't come to church? Since you know that there is life after death, there is no reason that can justify your excuses. Let this last verse inform your attitude towards the things of God. There is the resurrection. There is life. Imagine after this place I fall down and die. What happened to me? Praise the Lord. But that when God is texting my work after the rapture, when he has come and gone, may he not find me wanting. Amen. May I be among those who said that will be in his right hand. Well done, faithful servant. Can you open your mouth and give him thanks for what you've had today? Just thank him for the lessons around his death and the lessons around his resurrection. The first lesson is that God wants us to depend on him for provision. And number two lessons, by carry the bag, by the sword, prepare for the future danger. Number three is uh, he didn't affirm baptizing on behalf of the dead, but he used uh, an existing practice to further explain to them resurrection and number four is life experience facing death if there is no resurrection why am i facing all these troubles hallelujah come on open your mouth and give him thanks for what you've had oh we give a praise god and thank him thank him thank him thank him for what you've had in the name of jesus in jesus that we pray finally you say lord i've known there is life after death i've known there is resurrection let my commitment in the house of the Lord multiply. I want to pray for yourself. I don't know that it's life after death. Lord, I know after this world that is life. When I die, that is life after this life. Having the knowledge of life after death. Let my work. You are not praying. You are not praying. Let my work. Let my commitment in the things of God. Hallelujah. Oh, we give a praise. We give a glory, God. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we thank you because you've heard us. May we not live our life like those who we eat and drink for tomorrow we die. But God, let the consciousness of eternity, let the consciousness of life after death, let the consciousness of resurrection take over our minds and, and let it regulate what we do, say, and think in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for them. May this teaching about life after death prepare in them a new zeal in the heart of the Lord. Oh, we give a praise, Lord. And the first lesson is that you want us to depend on you for provision. When I send you with that box, did you lack anything? Lord, I speak unto them as many who are going through lack, but my faith in Christ is overcome. And Lord, the next phase, and let them realize that it's need for them to rise up and walk, to rise up and prepare and get the same train for the future. We give a thanks, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Look at someone said there is life after death. Therefore, you can't afford to be like a Jessica. Say never there is life after death. Therefore, you can't afford to be like a Jessica in the peace of God and in the pursuit of your purpose. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We pray that God Almighty 